Today we're working on lesson 8.4, the vertex form of a quadratic function. Let's get started by putting your name at the top of your paper so that what's yours, make sure to stay yours. All right, the vertex form of a quadratic function does exactly what the name says it's going to do. The function in its setup shows you the vertex of the quadratic, which is really nice. So this is our vertex form, and what we see is that the vertex itself is going to be the two numbers of h and k, this one coordinate point of h and k. So the h comes from right here inside of the parentheses contained with the x, and the k is tacked on at the very end. Now you will notice that this is a minus h, and this here in the vertex is a positive h. So when you get your vertex, whatever value you're using for h, it will be the opposite of the sign in the form of the function itself. So we might make a note, opposite. sign. And we've mentioned that before, but it's been a while. Never hurts to have a little review. We see that the axis of symmetry is always the equation of x equals h. Whatever this h is, whatever this h is, opposite sign, is that h right there. They are the same. So we can draw another arrow to tell us where we got that information from. We can also make a note of saying, oh yeah, our shorthand, I don't want to write axis of symmetry every time that's long. We can write the AOS. We also have a nice reminder that, let's zoom in just a little. Discussing A. So A is here as a possible coefficient in front of your parentheses at the very beginning of your equation. So if A is positive, then this quadratic, this parabola, is going to open upward. Remember, it was a positive day. We smile. So if A is negative, this term, this coefficient in front of x squared at the very beginning, if this is a negative number, it was a negative day. It was a bad day. We frown. And so sometimes you will be asked of which direction does the quadratic open? And you'll say, oh, this opens upward. Or this opens downward. All right, let's do our first example together. We are asked to graph the following quadratic in vertex form, state the vertex, uh, find the axis of symmetry, and just state A. All right, we can do those things. So my vertex, well, before I go grab my vertex, let's rewrite what the vertex form is, just as a quick reminder. F of x equals A times x minus h squared plus k. And I like to line it up exactly underneath the one that we're working through, the example we're working through, just so it'll help us to have a better understanding of where we got numbers from. So my vertex is hk 
H comma K. So what's in the H location? A one. And I'm gonna use positive one. We do opposite the direction of the sign and I'm taking the number itself. Opposite of this sign, comma. And then K is whatever K is. That's a five. So my vertex is the coordinate point, one, five. Great, that was easy. It came straight from the equation. The second thing we are asked is, what is A? Oh, well A is this value in front of my parentheses at the very beginning of my equation. And this problem, it's a four. Now I happen to be aware that this four is positive. This is a positive four, which means, is he gonna have a positive happy smiley day or a negative frowny day? Oh yeah, he's in a great mood. So he opens up. I also happen to know that when A is larger than one, my parabola will be very narrow and four is definitely larger than one. This will be very narrow. Okay, the next thing we see is a need for the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is always an equation. X equals some number. What number? That one. So whatever H is, done. Wasn't that easy? Super easy. Now, the domain. We talked in a previous lesson that every single one of these parabolas that we are discussing in Algebra 1 will always have a domain that is equal to all real numbers. And that symbol of the double barred fancy R is shorthand for all real numbers. Sometimes if you're on a multiple choice problem, they might have the phrase or they might have the symbol. You just have to be ready for either one. So something that we haven't discussed today, but we did also on a previous lesson, was the range. We know that the range is a relationship with the Y, and it discusses the height of your vertex. My vertex has a height of five. The question is, is my parabola going to happen above the five, which would be a greater than symbol, or below the five, a less than symbol. We know that our graph opens upward, so my curve is going to be happening above the five. So it will be greater than or equal to the five. It's a neat little trick to understand the relationship of if I know the direction that it's traveling, then I know what symbol to use for my range. It's really helpful. Okay. Now, the one quick other thing to remember is this domain of all real numbers will not be the case if it's a story problem. Let's make a note. If you have a story problem, you can't go back in time. They just don't let you do that because they don't usually put superheroes in the Flash. And Flash always gets in trouble when he goes back in time. It's just not good. So that will be different when you have a domain in a word problem. All right, let's start graphing. My vertex is at the coordinate point, one, five. So Let's go to the right one unit, up five units. Right one from the center, from the origin. Up one, two, three, four, five. There's my vertex. Hey, 
Here's my axis of symmetry. X equals one. It goes straight through my vertex. And down through the entire graph. I know this is going to open upward, so we could go grab our calculator and find out exactly what our table is to help us out. I like to have five coordinate points on my table if possible. I always put my vertex in the center, one, five. And then I look to the right of my vertex, two, three. And I look to the left of my vertex, zero, negative one. I should get the exact same heights on the right and the left. Let's go look in our calculator and see what we find. So let's start on a new document. Always start on a new document. Never save. And we're going to use a graph. So our original problem said that we had 4 times x minus 1 squared plus 5. Let's type that in. 4 parentheses x minus 1. Close your parentheses squared plus 5. If I go too fast, just push pause. You'll get it in there. It's the equation that they gave us in the problem. Push enter. And there's my graph all the way at the top. I mean, it's like way up there. Let's go look at our table. How did we do that? Control T. Ah, oh, there it is. We said we wanted to start with an X value of negative 1. So let's go write in our y values that we got. 21, 9, 5, 9, and 21. Super. Let's see what we can graph. I can't graph 21. There's no way. It just doesn't fit. I can graph 9, though. So 0, 9. Let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There it is. Here's my vertex of 1, 5. Let's graph 2, 9. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And again, I can't graph 21. It's just not going to fit. And that's fine. There's my parabola. Ta-da! Oh, let's label our axis of symmetry. We wrote it, we just didn't label it. A-O-S. Great! Problem number one is finished. Okay, you get to stop the video and go try to do problem number two on your own. Come and ask me if you need some help. Welcome back to problem number three. Here in problem number three, we are instructed to rewrite these functions from the vertex form into the standard form. So they gave us one, we gotta go get the other one. Thanks. We're also gonna use our calculator to find a value of f of one and f of negative one. Okay, well let's go see what we need to do to get started. So this is the vertex form. There it is in all of its glory. And we need to expand it and multiply it out 
and combine like terms to go put it into the standard form. Do you remember what the standard form is? If you don't, let's write these down to compare them. We have f of x equals a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. That's my vertex form. And then my standard form, we'll slide over just a little, is f of x equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So now we know what we're supposed to shift gears to create. Okay, let's do it. So to get started, I see that I've got a quantity squared. And in our last lesson, we became experts at how to simplify a quantity squared. So that's what we're going to do. We'll say, oh, that's right. That means 5 times x minus 3 times x minus 3 minus that 1.5 that's on the end. So if you remember the pattern of behavior, great, do it. If you don't remember the pattern of behavior, but you know how to FOIL, do that. I'm going to emphasize our pattern of behavior. Let's change colors. So this becomes 5 times <clears throat> all of this quantity of x squared minus, because I have a minus, 2 times x times 3 plus 3 squared minus 1.5. Alright, let's tidy that up. 5 times the quantity x squared minus 2 times 3 is 6x plus 9 close your parentheses, minus 1.5. All right, we did the hard part. Now we've just got to finish this up. It comes in two steps. We need to take care of this 5 that's outside of parentheses. I also need to deal with this 1.5 that's at the very end. Do you remember your order of operations? What do you do first, multiply or subtract? Good job, you remembered, you have to multiply first. So we're going to distribute this five through the parentheses. Five times x squared, five x squared. Five times negative six x, positive times a negative, negative, five times six, 30 x, and then a positive, times a positive, yeah, it's a positive, 5 times 9, 45. Great, we are almost done. Minus that 1.5 that's waiting so patiently to be dealt with. Okay, we're at our very end. So f of x will equal this polynomial after I combine those two like terms. So I have a 5x squared, I have a minus 30x, and then what is 45 minus 1.5? Can you do it? Good job. It's 43.5, positive 43.5. So that is the standard form of our original equation from right there. So this one typed here in black, it has the exact same value as the one that we found here in pink. They mean the same thing, completely the same thing. They just look different. That's okay. Now, unfortunately, we have not finished the problem because it's said to either 
in either form calculate the value of f of 1 and the value of f of negative 1. So let's do that. We can use that, we can do that very easily in the vertex form. I think that's the fastest, easiest way to do it. Let's do it over here. f of x, we were told in the beginning when they handed us the problem. It's 5 times x minus 3 squared minus 1.5. All right. Let's check out f of 1. It will be 5, and this 1 will replace that x right there. 1 minus 3 squared minus 1.5. All right. So if you put that in your calculator, type it in, get an answer. Push pause and get your answer. Did you get 18.5? I sure hope so. If you did, nice job. You did it right. You could have used the standard form also, and you'd get the exact same answer. Isn't that neat? You should try it. Let's do f of negative 1. This is called evaluating a function. That's what we're doing. We're saying at this specific value, what is the function worth? Let's plug a negative 1 in for the x. So pause the video, type this into your calculator, and let's see what you get. Did you get 78.5? If you did, Great job. And again, you can try that in the standard form or in the vertex form. You should get the exact same answer either way. See you in a minute.